<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new live stream. There's a few people here already. Nice. Welcome. I should get this down a little bit. My name is John Limkul. This is a live stream for the PluginGuru.com web channel. And the PluginGuru.com website is sponsoring this, as always. Welcome. So I have a new library. This is a fun one. This is quite different than something I've done before. Let's see here. Let's go over here and say new guru. These are analog samples from a very famous analog synthesizer. Unfortunately, I don't own an original, original Pro 1, but I do own a Behringer Pro 1, which is what I sampled. And I thought I clicked it to go. Oh, did it. Hello. Yeah, there we go. There is a Father's Day sale going on this weekend. So this library is included in that sale. So you can get for $29.40 right now. Now, after Sunday night, it will go to, I believe, $34 is this intro price, the normal intro price that I would give on it. What was your signal chain for the recordings for the Pro 1? Straight out of the Pro 1, straight into Logic Pro and recorded um, without any processing. I just wanted to capture the sound of the Pro 1. And I can go like this and like this. And There it is. And this is actually a close representation of Bloody Brass. So we can play it on the Pro 1. You will never be exact. <laughs> it's just, there's a science to it. But, um... Now you can play it polyphonically. And then here is the floor plan for programming this patch on the Pro 1. It's actually, I need to go through and um, edit these a little bit. Some of these are not right. There's some modulation settings over here on the left that should be at zero. Because if you bring these up on the Pro 1, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't sound quite right. So I don't think I had any of that. Uh, Taylor did the uh, template layouts for me. I'll explain you the process here in a minute. But, but anyway, in the Pro 1, it's one voice. You can't play anything more than one voice because it's a one voice monophonic synth. So I think the fun thing of this is to take that from this synth, go over here, go back to here, <laughs> and uh, here it is now in Unify, where uh, you can play up to 64 voices. Right? And we've done this, I've done this for 25 different patches. So uh, it's a really cool library. Uh, has a whole different vibe to it. On top of this, as you can see, each one of the patches are available with a four times round robin and then a stereo option. And I think one of the better ones to, to really hear what's going on is the Detune PWM. This is the single sample version at first, the one that's just a name without anything in it. And this is the round robin. 
just hear variations happening. If I open this up and say instead of the round robin, go to just one. Now it's the same exact samples. That versus uh, right here. Just gives it a little bit extra life to have it be where what I did is I set Logic up with the map, which is a C minor. Sampled that for, I believe, five octaves. Um, see here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, as far as C's goes, there's actually seven. If you start at low C, went to high C. So it's six octaves of notes. <laughs> this is the map for the round... Is this the round robin version? Yeah, this is the round robin. So there are all of these samples times four in the sample list. So you see one and then C1, C1, and C. So there's four layers of the same samples on top of each other. Unified does this random round robin thing now where it's going to choose one of the four. And I just let Logic run four times recording the exact same patch <clears throat> as audio. And each one, the oscillators are at different uh, places in their phase and cycles. It's analog, so it's a little bit deviant from here to there, you know? Just a little bit. It's, you know, we have these analog knobs on software synthesizers, and they tend to make things really kind of radical. <laughs> um, Oh, thank you all for, yes, it was my birthday on the 16th a couple of days ago. It's crazy, crazy time of year for me. I've got all sorts of celebrations right at this time. It's Father's Day, all sorts of stuff. So thank, thank you. Appreciate the kind wishes. Um, but anyway, the concept being the round robins. And then I took it a step further because Unify has the tools in it to do more, right? We can use Polybox, which is a really cool... It, each note you play will cycle to the next MIDI channel. But Shane implemented a random button, which means that you can set it to a pool of two, set it to voice of 64, which means each voice could be up to 64 notes being played at once. And then I set up one, as you can see, one MIDI effect is going M1, M1. And then let me see, I can maybe zoom in on this if it's not clear inside of here. Yeah, let's go like this. Let's go whole desktop and I'm going to grab this and zoom this so you can see it even bigger. But you can see how this is M1 and this is M2. So these two have their oscillators set to PWM3 and 4 respectively for these two layers. Whereas the first two are PWM1 and PWM2, right? So what happens is now it's panned left and right. The left side's playing takes one and two, the right side's playing takes three and four. And just becomes this beautiful, super wide. And then we have all the knobs set up so you can go to the macro knob. Here, turn on the effects, turn on chorus. If you want amp velocity to it, I did put it onto a knob so that you could. On the Pro one, you don't have that, so it's. And you tend to play things, it's really interesting, you tend to play things differently when you don't have velocity control. It just gives it even more of a legit retro vibe when it's. So I did this for 25 patches, <laughs> huge amount of work, large amount of work. I want to thank, I don't know if Taylor's here. I think he was going to maybe not be here, but um, Taylor helped me loop all of these. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Not, when I say single, I'm talking about a single layer of samples, one of these. Each one of these has inside of it 
I believe it's 14 samples. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And seven is 13, 14, 27. 27 samples that are all looped per map. So every one of these maps that you see, the, now the RRs, I didn't need to loop because I looped them before, but each of the separate maps, when you call up Jet the Synth, and if you go to the patch for Jet the Synth over here, right? If you click the artwork, there is the patch to program it inside of a Pro 1. And I've, I've had a couple people talking about, you know, what synth did I use and so forth. Uh, I don't have access to a original Sequential Circuits Pro 1. Um, I'm not a huge fan of some of the things Behringer does, but I'm a big fan of some of the things they've done. And taking synthesizers that are no longer manufactured, that are 40 years old, that they can make and make it a reasonable price to own, I think is a very nice service to the electronic music community. I bought this. I have the Moog, Mini Moog. I have behind me over here in the corner, I have the Monopoly. And I'd like to do libraries like this for each one of those because all three of them have no patches. And I, you know, I've been to many studios <laughs> where people call up and say, check this out. They pull out some vintage piece of gear they've got, and they don't know how to make any sounds on it. And so they don't know how to set it up to play as a normal synthesizer. It sounds like, you know, they've got the LFO super fast, and it's on the filter, and it's doing all sorts of weird synthetic-y sounds. So the idea was we've got this really cool educational ability of having built into Unify a roadmap that can teach you how to program synthesizers. So you can get for under $350 a hardware synthesizer, sit down with this and program this sound and make Jet the Synth. So if we were going to go over here to, um, let's do this. Let's turn down Unify and let's see how fast it takes to create this patch. So and I'm doing it from feel almost in the dark because it's not that bright in my room except for really bright lights shining on me. So it's not ideal, but if we go just webcam two, and if I put this maybe in the corner like this and I could turn on my Mac display, put it like this so you can see the two. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to... So oscillator one and two are full volume, just a little bit of noise. Right here's your mixer section. Here are your two oscillators. It's just a sawtooth up here. Um, and it's all three turned on for oscillator B. Um, dum. The key, of course, to the synthesizer is what is the filter set to. So we're like this, 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 this. It's a short decay. See how close that is to pretty close. And now I can play it as a polyphonic synth. So let's go back to this. Hello. <laughs> so this is the birthday edition of this library, meaning I need to go through these and just confirm that the patch template is accurate. Taylor made these. I'll explain the process in a minute. It's pretty interesting without referencing the synth. So I haven't had time. So part of the reason for this being the birthday edition is I want to make some additional bonus patches. I made a whole bunch of really nice patches. I want to make some more. I'm going to do them in some live streams. I'll let you guys know 12 hours ahead of time that I'm going to do a live stream, at least 12 hours, maybe like 24 hours ahead of time or so, and then make some more of these. Right? 
finalized more plug and groove Skippy S type patches. Because the originals, I wanted to keep them very raw, like the synthesizer. So when you come up to these guys and you call up Razorback Saw, there's no programming to it. There can be. You can turn them into slow pads really easily with the tools here. And program away and do your things, but You know, in a little bit, we'll make a couple patches together from the source here, but um, is Taylor here? I don't know if Taylor's here. Yeah, I don't see any replies. Yeah, I don't think Taylor's here, but thank you, Taylor, wherever you are. <laughs> um, uh, and the interface they have for their sense is not necessary. Some minor sense with high screens and hardware. Right, yeah. So it helps to have roadmaps to patches sometimes to help you learn how to program something. And so I just wanted to, you know, I've always been about education. I try to share what I do. And um, I used to, when, gosh, in the, let's see, early, it was like 1985, I started working at a music store in Seattle. And um, we had a synthesizer section. We sold the JX3P. We rolled the Akai X80 and the AX60. We had, um, was it the sampler, the S something one, the single sample across the keyboard that needed a separate floppy drive rack piece to like load samples into it. I mean, just crazy history. Um, and it grew. We actually went out and we did uh, synthesizer education to the high schools in Seattle. We were very progressive in education. And one of the things we offered was every Thursday night, I did synthesizer programming classes. And so people could bring their synthesizer to the class, and then we would sit and we'd work hands-on to make sure people understood the different sections and what they did in a synthesizer and how they could be used to shape things and to get sounds and all that kind of stuff. So I'm always, I've always been, education is a really big part of my mission in life is make sure, in fact, uh, there's people like Kid Anthem, he's moved on, he's making libraries with Jason and other people and so forth, but he learned synthesizer programming from watching my videos over the last 12 years or so. So um, it's pretty cool, very, very, very cool. So I wanted to offer this as an opportunity to make a library, and you know, so many times people make a library with these sounds, you don't get to see the settings that they did to make those sounds. And so I wanted to kind of like peel back that window a little bit, let you see the sounds and be able to recreate the sounds that I made for the library. And, you know, some of these are just the raw waveforms. Other ones I programmed out to have like some pretty cool, unique... things to them. There's a pad that's a slow grower, which this is one where I had to forecast and picture in my mind how it would work when it was polyphonic. Because you can't play chords on a Pro 1. So I'm making sounds in some cases like this where I'm picturing, yes, that shape is going to be nice. For making this sound so it was different and then what i did let's take you through the process because it's kind of fun after i got done making a patch i took a picture of it and the folder or the samples that i had on my hard drive like this is the patch for slow grower that you're hearing right and then and I don't care about sharing the patches. If you guys see it and go like, oh, you're giving away your patches. It's like, no, it's about having them as a reference you can click here anytime and get to, you know? That's the nice part about this. Um, 
I don't, you know, I don't mind giving away the secret recipes that, but I'm not going to show you all of them just on purpose. Like here's this one and here's this one. Um, there's 25 of them. So I'm not going to show you that many in a live stream. But the next step after the picture was I sent, oh wait, um, let's see here. Not this, this. This is a work of art by Matt Chowski. This is what he sent me. <laughs> this is the interface of the Pro 1 mapped out into separate layers in Photoshop so that I could use the Move tool. I could select a parameter and Command T, and now I could rotate this to make it be what value I wanted. And I showed this to Shane, and Shane's like, you know, if you want, I could turn that into a mock interface for you so that you don't have, because here it's this, and when you go to the actual knobs, you have to open these up and turn off one knob state if you want it to be a different knob state. It's, it's rather complicated. It's, it's going to be like this library was going to come out in August <laughs> because of all the work it would take to do this with the Photoshop thing to get the template to, before I could make it into a screenshot that I then put into the final version. So Shane, God bless his heart and soul, turned around and made me this. This is a 3D mock-up of a plugin. Doesn't make any sound. There's no synthesizer guts behind it. It's just the interface of a Pro 1. And all the knobs and all the sliders work and it spits out high resolution images. And then what Shane did is added parameters so that I could save the state, load the state, and save a snapshot, which would, because you can see this is bigger than my screen. So I couldn't take a screenshot and get the wood on both sides. So he made it so it would spit out a, a screenshot of the full thing once we'd made it. So I got this to Taylor. Taylor took my photos and he, I, I think on sometimes he forgot to set knobs back to zero. <laughs> It's okay. It's easy to fix and stuff like that because I have the presets, the tabs for all of these. So these were the steps involved to make this library. It was very involved. <laughs> A lot more than just making patches and saving them and putting it online. Um, it's labors of love that we do over here. Um, what is the Akai S612? That's what it was. Um, the Akai S612 was a sampler. Uh, you're... Yes, I am. <laughs> Wood panels at the end are very important. Yes, they are. So having Shane and Matt help me with this and Taylor made this possible. I couldn't have done all this without three other people working on this library. So thank you to all of them. Hands together, head bowed, you know. It, it, it turned out to be a labor of love. I'm hoping to get this to a word out to the Behringer people so they can know about this because now they can have some cool Pro 1 patches that they can play. Right? And they can sit and go like this and program it to use it. So it's kind of a, kind of a fun, different approach. We have these abilities in Unify. This is one of the things I thought of when I was talking to Shane about the artwork. I mean, I, th I didn't include it. I should include it. Let me go like this. Go uh, reveal in Finder. Um, because the other library that uses this concept I wanted to show real quickly, go to this folder, to the temp, and that's Del Norte. Where is Del Norte? Is it over here and I just didn't see it? Yeah, it is here actually. So this is a library where I took the graphics in the, in the patches uh, concept a little bit differently. This is where it's showing photos that you can play. And be inspired by what you see, you know, so. I mean, there's nothing like standing underneath hundreds and hundreds of year old trees in the forest taking pictures of them, so. Yeah. 
it's just great 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 experience so when we put the graphics capability of clicking the artwork to be a photo i thought of a couple different examples one was this where it's an image inspiring you and there's all sorts of ideas for ways we can implement and, and, and like enhance that in the future but the other way was this where you would be able to call up a really cool patch since i've shown it before we'll just go back to slow grower um, and click here and there's your template of this patch And then there's so many tools inside of our simple little guru sampler to do fun things with this. Um, I made a video for this library, and one of the things that I showed is how, how valuable the shift parameter is right here. A lot of you might not realize how this works, but it's basically able, you know, you have a map on the keyboard for, let, let's see, let me get, you're not seeing Logic's keyboard because it's over here in the Pro 1, go like this, and... Uh, so you have this note, right? There's a way to shift the map, the key ranges. You can shift that up and down the keyboard. And if at the same time you use the chorus to actually change the tuning of that sample, if you listen, like listen to this sample, and then when I take it up an octave, see how much thinner it sounds? and tighter so if i took it up an octave but then i shifted the map so that it adjusted so that it was still playing back at the normal pitch that's what shift does so as i go up each semitone it's transposing down minus 100 semitones the same sample so it has sped back the playback of the samples because it's playing different samples, but they're still mapped to the same note that it was originally assigned to. Now it's super slow. Because when you transpose down, it's transposing the samp map up but it's transposing the samples down so now it plays as if this is what it was like two octaves down super slow Ave cool dude I got to see and meet Ave in Ave in um, at the Nam show it's really cool to meet you man he is far taller than you would think when you meet him in person <laughs> But this is the cool thing with the shift cool tool. Um, like, so if you go over here and you choose something else that has a cool attack, like let's say, well, like, oh, for the major third, right? So this is a cool. Well, here, let's kill the effects. We're, we're a little effect heavy. Let's kill the delay here. Hello. So the shift as you go up, it's going to play it like it was two octaves higher. Take it down, it slows it down. If you go like this, and I'll show you, I, I said this in the video, if you add a little noise box distortion, like go power curve. I pass the... You're getting into the daft punk kind of. And there's other tools inside of Guru Sampler. Like if you don't, if you don't want all that wow, just move the sample start later. And if you want to be really fun, wank on the random knob. Now it's randomly choosing a different place in that sample. Do that, 
put a dance track to that and you get yourself a really cool dance element. You know? But we used the shift tool. This is not new. <laughs> When we did voicing on the Korg M1, we used the shift tool to change, for example, let's say you let's reset our sample tools here. Uh, if you go to the standard library to the piano keyboard, this is, and you'll hear this in libraries, and I kind of laugh because they're making this big deal out of like this is this moody piano. And all they did is use the shift tool. Oh, we have distortion on it. Let's say no distortion. There. You can take, hello, come back here, please. Uh, you can take piano, make it more like a banjo. It's the same samples, you're just using the shift tool. Take it the other way and it becomes like a harp. Because what you're doing is you're basically saying, I want to play the samples as if they had been tuned down 18 semitones, but I still want to be on the keyboard where I can play. So I explained it to Shane. Shane implemented it so it works the way I expected it and hoped it would work, where as you transpose this, as I go like this, it's shifting the map one way and tuning the samples in the other way so that it's always playing... Now, it's changing samples. You'll hear it change. That's because it's actually calling up a different sample as it transposes the sample map. But at the same time that it's moving the sample map, it's transposing the actual samples with the, this course parameter. Under the hood, unbeknownst to you, it's doing this. And the key to that, that allows you to get more out of your sample map. Anything you load into Unify, you can use this tool if we go to something like the voices. So let's go to Creaturesque has all these really cool voice samples. Go to something like some of the Latin phrases that are. Now this might not work because this is just one sample. So it won't work. In order for the, the shift to work, it has to be a map that has multiple samples in it. So if we go to something like, I think even Dreambox, all of these were a single sample because these were Omnisphere libraries. So they were made for a single sample interface because that's all you have inside of Omnisphere. But if you go to something like the roads, even the roads will have a different vibe. If you shift it down, Versus going the other direction, it's going to be the tin ear. It, it does a complete transformation. to the, It's the same samples. It's just transposing it. So, so that tool gets used uh, in some... We can use that for some of these things like Laserium, which has this really cool... You go to Shift and you go Plus... Plus means speeding up, so. And minus is slowing it down. Right, so it's, it's cool to have tools like that in our humble little Guru Sampler to play with um, to make the, the these patches and take them to farther places because once you, you know, a lot of like I said, are just, you need a star that's just a because from that you can make all sorts of sounds with the parameters. But other patches, I decided to make more as like an actual patch. We have noise in here. There's a wind slash ocean waves. Yes, yeah, the shift is changing the character. So like something like this is still a ton of samples. So as you can hear, it has this nice slow shape in the sample. There's no enveloping going on. So if I use shift and go plus, this is gonna shift the map, but transpose the samples 
in the opposite direction to make it so it plays them back faster. Whereas if I go in the other direction, it's really slow. It only works when you have a lot of samples in a map because it needs to be able to shift the map and use samples that were supposed to be playing down low are now being played up high, but they're transposed to equal what the original pitch is supposed to be for that note. So you can use this. It's kind of like sample stretching, you know, pile stretch, stuff like that. But again, it all depends on having multiple samples across the keyboard. Uh, if it's just one sample, it can't do that. The cool thing with some of the technology for sample manipulation is it can do that in real time to a single sample. It's calculating what it would sound like when if it was down 24 semitones, but it plays it back at the rate that it's supposed to, you know, f in pitch for that note. But the rate of it has changed because it's recreating it to play lower or higher on the keyboard. So shift is fun for doing that kind of stuff. And so we'll, I'll use that for some of the bonus patches made in this library. Um, one of the other patches, Analog EP, I should point out, I made a patch around this. I didn't want this one to just be the way it came from. Let's see how good your ears are. Can you listen to this? Do you hear electric piano? Even from one note. I heard the piano. So this was made on the Pro 1. So that I could filter it. So this one patch where if you want it to be blaring loud and wide open, go like that, go to the second page, and turn off amp velocity. And that's what I sampled. But I wanted velocity, so it's expressive like a piano. And I wanted it to be filtered and not get this bright. Cause it, but that character, that kind of that squarish, I thought this would be fun if let's say this take the TX 816 library 816 library say unify layer and let's go to the electric piano let's take hold down option alt transpose it down an octave right so it, it's able to be played as a layer in a piano patch. Right, so that was the idea uh, behind the electric piano patch. <laughs> Uh, by the way, the TX816 library is a free library that any of you guys that own Unify are able to easily pick up. It's over here. Go to the website, click the Unify link. Um, scroll down the Unify page till you get to the Unified libraries. There's 80 plugins that have Unified patches. And at the bottom is the TX816 factory patches. And for this Unlike all the other libraries here, you need to own Dune 3 to play Dune 3 patches. If you want to play the Dune 3.5 patches, you have to update your version of Dune 3 to version 3.5. But this is one, the only library down here that is only needing Unify because it's using DX, which is the wonderful plugin FM synthesis that is included when you install Unify, that is a free plugin on the internet. It's one of the included when you go to the list of Unify Standard Instruments. 
it's in this list. So DX is included. So the, the TXA16 library is able to, if we go just normal, all of these patches are... This is eight DX7s playing and check out the CPU meter down here. Super, super efficient. I think someone asked Arturia to do this with their DX in some way, and they said that it was too CPU heavy for them. So it's pretty cool that... Uh, these patches, they play super great, and they are the electric pianos. on lots and lots of songs in the 80s and early 90s because that's when the DX7 was king in town, let me tell you. Um, okay, so back to Patchmaster. But that's where the unified libraries live on the unify page. And we're, I don't know what the number count is now, but it's up to like 80 plugins that we support. And, you know, the thing that's fun with this is you could just Set this to Unify Layer. Uh, let's go to Zebra 2. I think I got that in here. And all the factory patches, which is all this is, we've court organized them so that you have access to seeing them. Um, there's one key. So we could go lo load this, and it loads it. <laughs> eh, maybe I don't want that. So you can double click to open this layer. It's Zebra inside of this layer, and you can see all the patches. So I could go down the list to pads. So now I've added Zebra 2. Easy to this electric piano. Right? So that's why we've unified all of these libraries, called them unified Spitfire Labs is a free set with a ton of really, really cool samples of all sorts of categories. Um, you guys, a couple years ago, made a whole bunch of bonus patches for this. We're going to do that again this fall. So get, your, get, get ready to do some programming on that kind of thing. If we go to, I think it's Soft Piano right here. Soft Piano. Unify Layer. Click that. And I'm going to actually, because it's a Soft Piano and... Everything else is probably really loud. I'm going to hold down Option, turn everybody down a little bit, and... So I have a DX, eight DX7s. I have... Maybe I'd want to open up this layer of Unify for the Zebra. Open up Zebra, maybe program it a little, be filtered. Go to the cutoff. It's being sent by... There we go. Get it to fit in there a little bit better. Maybe turn it up a little bit more. So there's 10 layers to make up the sound. CPU is just humming along very happy. And I could save this patch by just clicking save and save as. Give it a name, save it somewhere, and now you have your own favorite. Right? So that's how all the unified libraries work. Um... Any questions? Let me see here. Hi, Jeff. Oh, thank you for the birthday wish. That's nice. Does your Patchmaster Pro library come with the WAV files too? And if not, are you planning on porting them over to the WAV state? Mm. Good question. Um, it does not come with the WAV files. They are encrypted because that's one of the nice <clears throat> things with our libraries in Unify is that 
third party people, if other people wanted to, could make libraries for this and they are able to be protected and are not just WAV files that people can copy. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'll do this for WAV state. Um, there's other libraries I wish to port to WAV state first, uh, as far as other Mega Magic type of libraries and so forth. I kind of doubt it. I kind of want to keep this as an exclusive for Unify at this point, um, because it's kind of a it it's it's kind of a package deal. The, the idea is yes, it samples, but it's also programming help for people that own the synth. So I don't I don't know. I haven't thought about that or where else to have this library go. Let's see. Right, Gerhardt, that's right. Play around with the shift knob. Um, again, you need to open up Guru Sampler and look at the sample list to make sure there's multiple samples before you will notice anything with the shift knob because shift can't shift if it's just one sample across the keyboard. It's just has nothing to work with. So one thing I do, let's make a bonus patch. Now these bonus patches, I'm not going to release them until July 1st. Um, I could give it to you guys, but there's a chance that I'm going to modify things, um, change, you know, do some finalizing. Um, I don't think I'll change the name, but sometimes if, if, if I give it to you, then I can't change anything in the file name and stuff. And I, I don't want to do that. So this is more just for fun, for programming time. I really don't have anything to show you guys today except this library. Um, I could mention briefly before we get into the programming, if we go over here and call up Mr. Spotify, which we all love so much since it's pretty much <laughs> caused, uh, well, I don't know. I, it, it's inevitable with technology. I have an album I have released of my own tracks. I'll get back here. Um, that I, These are 20 to 30 year old songs. So it's a whole different era songwriting wise. Um, what you're going to hear mix wise, all that kind of stuff. Um, it says 17 tracks. There's actually 16 because I made a mistake and uh, Nullify is played twice <laughs> by accident. I'm trying to get it to where they get rid of the second nullify. It was supposed to be a different song, and I just didn't get the right song file attached to the uh, information for it. But it's a really fun album of my music. So if you want to see music that I did many years ago, I just wanted it out there before the clock expires and it just sits on my hard drive and doesn't go anywhere. Um, I, it's called Featuring because I worked with four other musicians on, you know, one musician on different songs, three singers and a trumpet player who was a dear friend of mine in Los Angeles called Charles Moore. C. Moore is just an incredible person. We lost him probably, I think, over 10 years ago. Um, he used to be with the original MC5 out of Detroit as a horn player. Great cat. And um, I wrote these tracks and then he came over and he played trumpet muted trumpet with beautiful Harmon mute, um, maybe two or three times and then would leave. We'd have, we'd always go out for burgers. We had turkey burgers all the time. There's a restaurant in Los Angeles that had just the, it's called Billy's Grill on Van Nuys Boulevard, Van Nuys and I believe Magnolia. And they're no longer there. But um, Tavi, this young, small Korean woman was the owner of this store and she did, she had buffalo burgers and turkey burgers and cheeseburgers and stuff. We'd go out for burgers and we'd come back and then play on these tracks that I had written. And then he would leave and then I would move around audio pieces that he'd played um, to turn them into the tracks that you hear. So he didn't know <laughs> what he actually played on the songs until I played it back for him with everything in a completely different order than when he was jamming to them and playing to them. So it's, it's really fun how they turned out. It's fun 
experiment with hard disk recording. This was kind of in the early golden era of hard disk recording. There's a track on that album called Learning to Love, which is the very first track in, I think, 1989 or 90 when Logic Pro became able to record hard disk audio. And I got the update and Kathy came over and I, we wrote this song and she sang into a microphone plugged into the mixer into my computer and recorded our first audio to hard disk first ever that I had done um, on that track. So it was fun. Well, <laughs> okay, so I don't want to get political because that's not the point. Uh, it's I use DistroKid. So it's available on virtually every streaming service. I, I don't see people unless you do a lot of touring, making money with music. That era is gone for most musicians unless you get a company that really promotes you. Um, I just want the music out there before I die so that you can hear it. So I put it out through DistroKid because they make it available easily to everybody for a very reasonable rate. So... Um, yeah, I will be putting it on Bandcamp um, probably this coming week. I just had to get through my birthday week and all this stuff and getting this library out. I know, I know. It's it's I, I respect all the political opinions on everything. I'm not a political person. I I I don't like politics. I wish everybody just treated everybody equally and didn't try to be jerks, but they're not. So we do have to be political to a certain point. Um, you know, Spotify is a company that had a great idea. If you're mad at Spotify, you have to be mad at Amazon. And, you know, it's just part of the technology. It's convenience of computers. And somebody figured out the mouse trap before anybody else. And so they get to win the big cheese. And uh, so that's how it works. I just want the music out because I wrote these songs. They've sat on my hard drive for 20 to 30 years now. I look at them and each year I'd go like, I'd sure like to get those songs out. Um, yeah, YouTube Music. So if you have YouTube, th thank you, Blue. Yes, YouTube Music has them. Again, DistroKid, if you guys haven't used DistroKid, I I'm, I'm, I'm not an endorsee with them or anything like that, but you can upload and pay your membership and upload all your music. They will stream it. You can get your artist account going and they will put it into all of the online streaming services and make it for sale. Um, ev even on uh, Apple Music, you can buy the library as an album. You can buy it on uh, other places that sell the music as well as stream it. Um, so DistroKid does all that for me because I, I don't know how to <laughs> submit something to uh, the streaming services and get it to show up and all that stuff. They take care of all the... There's a license. We did a really fun version of Calling You that I love. Um, so that they deal with all the licensing and getting royalties paid to the original songwriter that wrote Calling You. I contacted him and said, hey, I did this really cool version of Calling You 25 years ago. And I sent him a link to play it. And he's like, that's one of the coolest versions of this song I've ever heard. <laughs> so I'm really happy with how stuff like that turned out. I'm just happy to share it with you. That's the whole bottom line of the reason to do the whole thing in the first place is I just want to share it. Get out there and make it available. So if, if you don't know DistroKid, they have, it's very easy. You can even go back and change the artwork before it's released or even after it's released. You can change all the different information for the song and the credits and all that kind of stuff. You can't actually replace the songs without deleting the whole album. And I don't want to delete the album now that it's live because my goal was to get it up before my birthday and I accomplished that. <laughs> it takes a couple of weeks for it to go live. So anyway, and yeah, I'm glad you guys get to hear it. So that's the whole purpose. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's again, these are songs written 20 years ago. They're like song songs with bridges and verses and choruses and so forth. Um, some of that kind of music songwriting style has kind of gone away a bit. It's not the same, right? So Anyway. So let's make a patch or two with this library. Um, let's start with the saw clean, but I'm gonna use the round robin version because 
actually, yeah. The nice thing with this is that um, it's just a single layer. Now, I'm going to show you something because we do have a version of 1.9 we're going to be releasing probably next week. We're going to do it as an open beta, meaning it's not the final version of 1.9. And the reason we're doing that is because Shane is in the process of moving. He's not in a place where we can get into the nitty gritty and make sure everything is locked down for an official 1.9 release. But there's some things that we added to Unify 1.9 that are nice for, they were designed specifically for this library. So um, what one of the cool things that we added is um, say, here's the uh, stereo version of the saw, right? Let's say I want to turn this into an interesting, like a pad, right? So I'm going to first click solo and I'm going to bypass polybox and then play it in the center of the field. And let's change the shape of this. I want to maybe have a... Let's have this be a notes with a custom shape. Let's make this be like a rhythm element. So we'll go to presets, rhythmic pulses. Let's see, do I want this? Maybe I want a little bit different shape. So let's go rhythm pulses. Maybe I want to add an additional pulse right here. Let's add another pulse right here. No, I don't want to load a preset. I like that. That's kind of cool. And a little res. Okay, so I had this rhythmic element, right? Now, I want to turn this into stereo on the other three layers, right? So, we have some cool tools to do that. For one thing, I can hold down Control and Shift and click the bullet, and that copies. It's the same thing as going down here and saying Copy Plugin State. It's now a short key, so I can hold down Control and Shift and click to copy. And then inside of these other Guru samplers, there's now a little lock over here. I'm going to lock this so it doesn't change the sample select. Because I want the sample select to stay in one, two, three, four. Hold down shift, click these other three, and I have pasted that envelope, that all the parameters and stuff. So now I can go left, right, left, right, and this, and... Now all four layers do that. So I have tools that allow me to quickly take something from one patch. Um, let me let me save this as a work in progress really quick. So this is a B, uh, Z BPM synth moving oceans. I'm just giving it a name. And then I have to make something to match. I do this quite often where I make a, a name and then I have to make something that matches the name. So this is a BPM synth. And we'll delete the comments. So that means I have to update it and say save. Because I want to show you that you can do this in other ways. Like say you were like... Um, 
I can hold down control, shift, and copy. I can go over by holding control, shift, and clicking this little button right here. I've copied the Guru Sampler clavi shape, right? Because the original of this is this. Well, I'm going to go over to the saw clean and I'm going to open this up. I'm going to lock the waveforms, hold down shift and click this. And now instead of being a bright, buzzy, right, I've pasted that synth onto this other patch that didn't have it. So. You can use this anywhere. You go to any patch, open up, turn on the lock, hold down shift, click right here. Hey, let's use this for this other layer I want to make for here. So let's go over here to arpeggios, turn on MIDI box. I'm going to go to the standard library. The reason that we've packed the standard library with tons of MIDI files and why 1.8, I added a whole bunch of new MIDI files and stuff because this way any other library can access these MIDI files. So I can go here, I'm going to go to the orchestral and choose one of the strings, like one of the 16th notes. Let's go halftime. And then we have, I don't know if you guys have played with these tools much, but we have scale and offset so that I can I can get a wider dynamic range by bringing up the scale but turning the velocity offset down in the negative direction. So this expands on, this is like the dynamic control in your DAW for MIDI that you've played in. It allows you to expand the velocity to be wider than what was originally played. So I'm going to use this. And instead of silky chorus, I'm going to have this do a delay. And I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to say copy this layer. Then I'm going to go down to my ZPPM synth patch that I had made. BPM synth moving oceans. And it's... And you go up here and you say paste layer. And it will paste in that MIDI box layer. So you can do all sorts of fun things like, you know, now let's go to standard library. I'm going to say instrument one only. So I only am allowed one layer from one of these patches. And let's choose something like uh, trim low. That might be fun. Now it's moving oceans. So I need to get some ocean movement going on here. So let's... Let's say fixed and turn on sync so it cycles. slower I like that let's put reverb on it so it becomes more of a wash water verb is one of my favorites of course Maybe I want this arpeggiator. Let's do this. Let's solo, solo, solo. Pan this to the center and turn off polybox so I can. Maybe 
Maybe I want to slow it down. Well in here. Okay, I like that better. So I'm gonna hold down control and shift and click one bullet. Go over here, lock, because the lock is not saved in the patch. This is just a utility you can turn on and off if you know you need it. I forgot to turn it on there. So there. There. Now hold down shift, click the bullets for each one, and let's turn off solo, and let's turn on polybox and get you back into the left side. And... Maybe Razorback, I want to choose a different sample set. Let's choose a uh, slow grower. Since that's a little bit more of a pure tone, maybe I can get some distortion. Maybe let's see if just a little distortion in the delay would be useful. So let's go to power curve. And what might be fun on this, let's bring in a little pump house. And then I think maybe a little child matrix might be fun. I need to make some presets for this. I haven't made any presets, but um, if we were to pan on the interface, it's going to not work for me. <laughs> okay, well. That's a good start. There we go. So save. By the way, it added modified at the end of the list because I had added new layers into this. And so it wants to let you know that you've uh, made it bigger in layers than it originally was. Hit update. There. It's got, it needs a little work, but I like the direction that's going, so. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I'm not planning at this point to do a unified library for contact libraries of, of, of my libraries, unfortunately, because that bakes in the sample location to the patches because contact has to be it doesn't have any loose underneath searching abilities to correct things and so you would need to do that to the library yourself which is very easy to do let's let's we're going to shift gears for a second to help with this question so all you would do is you would call up from favorites contact let's say contact six you're using contact six Am I going to talk about my album? I might do a, a, a video sharing the album playing tracks. I've thought about that. Problem is, they were done so long ago. I don't have the song files. I don't have any of the assets. Um, I can't recreate those songs. All I have to my personal possession is the stereo mixes that I made and saved. Um, that's it. That's why I wanted it to be out and shared and stuff like that. So anyway, if you went to Make Magic Guitars Complete, 
say that you were going to go to the multiple sample guitars, say you wanted the nylon aria mega magic, right? Well, your, your computer, you've done the search and you've probably had to do a batch save, batch resave for it to save so that it calls them up in the right places, right? All you have to do is go save, library name, let's say new library, let's give it the name Unified. Uh, this is Mega Magic Guitars K6. And I'll put JL since it's my per you could name it whatever you want, or you could save it just to the user library. This is Aria A R Aria Six String Mega Magic One. You could give it tags, or you could just delete them. It's not required. Save as save, and now you've started a new library, Mega Magic Guitars, and all you have to do is open this up. Go to the next patch in the library. Just right click or however you get around to the patches. Let's say the here's the Yamaha DEI drive. But again, the location where, where these samples are all stored, contact knows for me. And it's a very different location on different hard drive names for you. So the problem is, is that when I save these as patches, if I go save, this is the Yamaha DI, DI Mega Magic 1, save as, because it's a new file, save. Now I have both. I could go over here to Unify Layer, I could just click one and get both. And it loads without error. If I did this whole thing and sent it to you, every patch would not work. It would pop up the stupid error messages. You would have to go into each layer, open this up, say, okay, thank you, I know it doesn't work. Then you'd have to load the patch that works. You'd have to find this patch that works for you for each of the, the patches and then resave it by holding down Option Save or going here and hitting Update. So there, there's no benefit really other than the layout, but the layout would, it's very frustrating. I wish I had a different solution, but there isn't a solution that I know of that allows me to use, you know. Now, if, I, if these were licensed, they showed up under the Libraries tab, that's different. These libraries, I could unify any of these and everybody's able to, for the most part, load them and they work because Contact keeps track of them in a different database than us lowly third-party people that use the file portion. Normally, you use this to navigate to your samples and stuff like that. So it's a complicated situation. There is no easy solution that I've found to taking my contact libraries and making a unified version. So you have to build it yourself. It's the only way to get to where, and all, again, all it is, it's unified libraries are the easiest thing to make because you're just changing to a different patch. This is the Yamaha DI MM2. So then I go over here and go Yamaha DI MM2, save as, save. Open this up. <laughs> you can even, if you have two windows or this open behind it, you could say steel string DI dry. Save six string Yamaha. This is the uh, steel. Uh, I can't. I can't spell today. Steel string. Di dry. Save as. Save. It doesn't take that long to make your favorite, most used patches into patches for Unify. And once they're made into patches for Unify, you can go Unify Layer and click all the others. And just like that, I've added all four of them. Right? So I wish there was an easy way. If I could do this in a way where I could get it to you, Daniela, and it would load without an error, I would. I can't. It's just not physically possible. So.
again, even even if you're doing that with well now Ethera, I don't think his is a his might be in the libraries tab. I can't remember where Stefano made his final version, but uh, ch- there's a good chance that you send those patches that you've made, Daniela, to anybody else, and they can't load them. So. Yeah, if, if now if you put them into the exact same, you know, contact, actually there there is a possible solution. It's 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 um just tricky in that you have to go over to on the Mac, it's in documents, and then there's a folder here called native instruments. Right here. And I believe it's under user content. Or I think you can also do under contact where it goes to presets. No. I think it's under user content that you have to put the, the files and stuff like that for things to work. Um, contact. Yeah, see, this is where we have Ethereum Gold and all this stuff. And um, I think these are the full libraries. Yeah. So it's an awful lot of memory. So when you do that, then this requires the customer, anybody else that gets the files, they have to put their Ethereum Gold folders in the exact same user content, nat- native instrument slash user content fo- contact slash folder, right? And the folders have to be named exactly the same. And then in theory, it should work. But customer, I mean, I put my sample libraries for contact on a completely different hard drive. You know, so uh, it's it's kind of a we thought about doing that, but it's just so much work. And then it's tech support, email, email, email back and forth to help people know how to set that up. So I don't want to do that. Yeah. If you have multiple drives and you have different libraries on different drives. Um, so too complicated. So we I, you know. It's fun to have the libraries available for contact, and if you have contact, you can use them. Um, but it's just too much work to get them to, to work inside of um, lots of user support issues, as Shane says. And we had lots of user support email for a long time <laughs> when I was trying to support it, and we were having the built-in library b- rebuilder, remember that, inside of like 1.6, I think. Um, just too much work. So it's easier to say, build the library yourself. <laughs> build the favorite patches that you like. You, whatever plugin you have that you love, say that you love Hive. And there's a patch that you use all the time. So go to presets. Um, maybe you use this all the time. Moving piano log or mirror piano log. So you just go save. This, you could call it even like Hive, Mirror, Piano Log. Save it into the user library or start a new library for your favorite patches. Save as and save. And if I go down here to the user library, that patch is here. So then I could go to any other library. There's the piano that we did for Patch Master. So I could go up here to Key. Right click, load this into a new unify layer and and it works. So those types of options are available for saving any of your favorite patches. Um, wherever they come from, that's the process. Just call up the plugin, call up the patch that you love, hit save. Give it a name, choose where you want it to be saved, whether it's a new library and you put in the name for the new library and Unify will make the folder directories that are needed or just to user folder. It's kind of set up as like a depository just for you to put patches and save it. And you can build up your database of favorite patches. That now you can layer with, you can add them to other libraries. I could go over here to Cloud City and I could go, I think there's some key stuff down here. I saw key, heavy heart pad, 
Loading a new unified layer and. I've added this from Cloud City. And then I want to add a mallet, and I want one of the cool round robin mallets. So I could go over here to Bell, up here at the top, Bell. Down at the bottom are these RR. This is the blue tongue drum open that'd be pretty cool so i'll load that into a new unified layer here's the overtone oh it's off <laughs> there we go and then because it's a little out of tune Cool trick to like make it work a little better is to like let's just add Valhalla reverb, It'll make it really pretty. So go down here, go to Valhalla, say like room. <laughs> okay, maybe it doesn't work. I thought I had that in tune. I tried to tune that. Well, anyway. That's the steps to get your favorite patches as presets that you can easily call up and layer inside of Unify. Any other questions? Um, yeah, like the steps that I took, like Shane is saying, there a handful of the uh, our customers have unified a lot of these libraries that are unified. I didn't do them. They did using, as, as what's it called, um, auto hotkeys and other applications that watch your mouse clicks and you click next patch and then copy information and assets and it's able to paste them into place. Some of them are really elaborate processes, but they have it down to where they can hit a button and go away and it will save all of the patches out for you. So really fun. Uh, any other questions you guys have? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of capabilities in Unify. It's, uh, I don't know if it's to the level of a Tesla, but... Okay, well, thank you for watching and stuff. Any, yeah, I, I know everybody asks about the Vital Library. I'm still waiting to hear back from my friend in his work, so. Um. <laughs> it does count for something. Can the auto hotkey steps be done on a Mac now? Um, there's a thing called Magic Keys I bought, and I've, I've, I've spent a little time, not a lot. Macintosh. Uh, my friends in L.A. use this all the time. Uh, advanced. Let's see. Uh, it's magic keys. Of course, you have to scroll down forever to get to where you see. Magic. Magic. Magic keys. Uh, magic keys. Let me see if this is the right one. No, that's not it. Um, I do I have it on my computer now? I've kind of disabled parts of it because it wasn't, it was something was popping up messages and stuff. I'm like, I don't want to hear from the software right now.
Uh, oh, Keyboard Maestro. That's who it is. Right. Here we go. Keyboard Maestro is the Mac version of something kind of like auto hotkeys. And it's complicated, but it does, it does some super cool things to improve productivity. So if you, it's back in the day, it used to be quick keys was what it was for the Mac. That was really nice. And I actually had, I could set that up. I, I haven't had the same success with um, Keyboard Maestro, but that's the one that I have a couple other friends in LA that do a lot of production. Um, they do more notation and stuff like that, and they use it for helping them quickly do the scores for pieces for film. Uh, really cool stuff. So that's something to look at if you want something like that. All right. Well, it's good to see you all. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Um, oh, thank you, Frank. Um, oh, the library subsets. Uh, Fustone, what do you mean? Can you show library subsets? Oh, sure. Save and choose. Okay, so library subsets is an area up here that allows you to, uh, I could say, I'll, I have more like, see now, I have to um, quit Unify. It, it hasn't updated. I added, if you run Unify and then you add libraries like I, I do, um, I added some more just before the live stream. Now when I go here, it has a whole lot more to it. So subsets are when you have many libraries like this inside of Unify. And you want to simplify the view so you don't see all of these all the time because this list can get rather long, right? If you start unifying and you've got unified 50 different plugins that you own, and then there's the plugin guru, there's 80 libraries or so. There's only like, I think, 60 that I've saved so far for unify. And then unify its own core like Cloud Station and Core Station and Renegade and Melodic Techno and there's other libraries in your Unif Unil Chill, Unil Lo-Fi. So what you can do is you can click this button and you can choose and hold down shift, or actually I believe it's the, the command key to choose specific libraries that you want it to save as a subset. Or if you don't, you just want to see, let's say I just want to see um, Del Norte, Patchmaster, and Mega Magic Keys. If I close this, when I click right here, I now only see those libraries. So it is a filtering that's real time that I can say, I just want to see Patchmaster and Serum close. And now this list of all my libraries is limited to only two. Now, if you want, you can save this as a specific type of subset for a film project you're doing, where you only want to have access to certain things. I've made certain ones for like the plugin guru libraries. These are the libraries that I've made for Omnisphere and for other plugins. Then I have um, the loading of Unify exclusives, which now Patchmaster Pro is new, needs to be added to this as well. And I don't have it in the list, but probably Mega Magic Keys would need to be added too. But since I added Patchmaster Pro, I can hit save. I can go over here to Unify Exclusives, Save, Replace. And now I've updated it. So now this list shows me just the Unify Exclusives. We have down here the ability also to determine whether we want to only see one thing. Like if we only want to see tags and bonus, um, and say we want to say inside of Patchmaster Pro, uh tags Let's see i think i maybe i haven't done that yet for this i did it for mega magic guitars i haven't tagged these with bonus yet <laughs> so i will be doing that's why this is the birthday release version it's not totally finalized and stuff like that but if i go over here and i go tags comma bonus because it's a z pad update oh and i've got the, the the unify library i can't update but if you do that well you, you can't do that but once I do that and save it, and then you get the library, you'll be able to say, I just want to see tags and type in bonus, and it will show you just the bonus. So we have subset options not only for the libraries, and you can click here to, to get to it. You can also, I believe it's hold down, is it? Yeah, 
you can hold down control when you click on the library subsets. That's the same as clicking the load button, how it shows you this. If you're here, you can hold down control and click and get access to that same preset list of libraries. So if I say all libraries, now it's showing all libraries, hold down control, click and say just plug in Guru libraries. And now it's just the Omnisphere libraries that I have loaded up inside of Unify at the time. Um, or I could say all libraries again and close and now we're back to seeing them all. So subsets, we also have subsets over here for the instruments, audio and MIDI effects. This is where you click for the plugin list. At the very, very top, you have something you can't change. This is the set of things installed with Unify that we give you access to so that they are always there. They don't go anywhere. But this middle area where it says swap and it's got the, the line above and below, these are where you can store subsets. And if you want, you can click the subset folder, go to instruments, um, by companies. Like if I go over here and close this and I say subsets by companies, I have all of these subsets inside of the company subset folder. So it can be folders inside of folders to get you to have everything organized. So it's really easy to go. I want a cherry audio synth. And here it is instead of this, which is just the every plugin, the bottom option right here. This all instruments is all the things that Unify currently knows about. So you have these different ways of the by company is really, really fast to see cherry audio. If you go here, now I have to find the cherry audio folder. Here they are to see. It's just a little bit quicker to do it this way. So, but we do have subsets for libraries up here too. That's under this tab. Click right here to change this interface to show you the subsets. And what this does is it lists all the libraries. Then again, you can hold down the command or I think it's a I, it's command on the Mac. There's a button on the on the PC that you can click and then you can click multiple libraries that aren't connected to each other and either close and now you only see those libraries or save it so you can call it up in the future as a preset. Um, so I hope that helps fuzz. <laughs> okay, shout out. Um, shout, let me type my little shout out from Portland, Oregon. I hope you all have a great Father's Day. And thank you for joining us for this little time. Uh, oh, really? Oh, that's so cool. Another, it's amazing how many birthday twins I have that are burned around this area. Yeah, that's nice. Samurai san, happy birthday. Belated to you as well. There we go. North Carolina, Boulder, Colorado, San Francisco. Hey, Jeff. My daughter's running around there somewhere in the city. Happy birthday, Ken. Gerhard, yeah, from Germany. Hello, thank you. Hope this helps. Uh, it's really, really fun to keep making fun libraries and coming up with ideas. Um, back to work for the next one. Actually, I got to do bonus patches now, so there's more fun patches to make. Um, when will the patch one intro deals end? So let's cover that really quickly. Thank you for asking, Kasaka. Um, right now, you can go to the Plug Guru website, and it's Father's Day weekend, so I have a sale going on, 40% off everything. Um, not Unify, not the United for Ukraine library, but all the libraries are available at 40% off. So that means Mega Magic Guitars, which I introduced a couple weeks ago, is available at 40% off. Uh, Patchmaster Pro is available until Sunday night at 40% off. And then after Sunday night at midnight in here in Los Angeles, West Coast time, I will change it to its $34 introductory price. So it's a chance to get it and save $5 more if you get it this weekend. Um, otherwise, it will go to $34 on Monday morning at 12.01. Can I remember you the title of my album? Yes, it's called Featuring. And the name is here, I'll give you a, um, I know you guys, some of you guys don't like Spotify and all that stuff, but here, let me do this. I'll give you a link. So I can go share, copy album link. Um, here it is. 
So if you want to play it, there it is. And hope you enjoy. Lots of spectrosonic sounds. <clears throat> this is back when samples, <clears throat> in many cases, were on samplers. Like Happy Times, I wish I had the song files, but this has these really cool sound effects. Wave station in there. <clears throat> My virus desktop. But this is a sound effect right here. I made all of these sounds with the Roland sampler just like in real time to adapt machine, just like changing things to make it play back really fast and weird. You can still do stuff. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do a video. There's all sorts of ways to do cool production tricks and stuff. Um, Empathication was on another album. This is one of the tracks with my friend Charles Moore. Good stuff. So let me see. Can you hear this? I hope so. Yep. So, good stuff. It's a fun album. Sounds great. I'm very proud of how it sounds, even though they're 20 plus years old. Um, but it's right there. So thank you again. Enjoy, 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 enjoy the new library. If you need some really sweet sound. Oh, I didn't even show you. I should show you real quickly. These bonus patches are incredible for the patch master. I, I'm having some really great fun making really cool. Just really, really cool. Um. Sounds very, <laughs> truly retro in a really cool. Right? There's cool solo lead. So there's all sorts of fun stuff like that. Cool basses. Another, here's a big mama. Some cool basses. So the bonus patches, <clears throat> I expect to get this up to like 128 patches for the final version on July 1st when I release it. We made one today, right? Right here, moving oceans. I'll clean this up more. <clears throat> concept is almost there. It's just not quite as pure of a concept as I expect for my patches. So it will change some from what you hear now. Oh, like the, yeah, the mellow saw was really nice. It's, um, you know, the filter inside of Unify is great. So take the bright and, and if you want to make it even more mellow, go over here to the uh, filter, make it a higher. Actually, here, let's do this. Let's save. I want to save that. Um, solo saw super mellow. Because <laughs> that's that's really sweet. So save as. This will be one of the bonus patches. And I'll sweeten it a little bit more. With the 48 dB filter. Well, Daniela, um, so a lot of times someone like Simeon is just showing products. You can hear it and make a decision for yourself. 
Just because we show something doesn't always mean we endorse it and think you should just automatically buy it. He's showing it. You can go, oh, I don't like that. I, you know, I mean, so stuff like that. It's almost weeping now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the filter in Unify's uh, Guru Sampler is capable of getting some really, really cool... Let's see here. Here, I'll give you guys this patch. So save, uh, reveal in Finder. <clears throat> Let me put this to Dropbox. I'll give you guys, if you have this library, because this patch I probably won't change too much from what it is. Uh, go over here to uh, freebies. Let's see. Uh, where did I put those? Plugin Guru freebies. Uh, unify. This is for, I got to make a folder for it. This is for patch master pro one, and then go over here to see for saw. Let me compress that. Uh, let's see. Compress that. And then this is just a single patch. Copy the link. I'll paste this into the chat. Now, if you download this, here's how you would get it <laughs> to work. So let's go back to there. So you'll unzip and you'll end up <clears throat> with this patch, right? You can click and drag it over the interface. If, let's say I've got another patch playing. Like I can click and drag and it will load it immediately to play and then I could hit save and I could save it into Patchmaster Pro or you can right click on a patch in the Patchmaster Pro library say reveal in the finder here's the whole library just drag this over here um, it's gonna say yeah I want to replace it because I just made it right so it's gonna copy over the same thing if it's a dot unify file that just means you can edit it and modify it the UPF are what you get from a library when it's installed. So this, I've been playing you the installed version of the library. Then click the little lightning bolt rebuild. And that will rebuild the database. It will go through and check. It's going to take it a second because I have all the... This is why I don't have every one of my libraries installed because that, that search gets longer as it gets larger. And then it will show up in the Z leads next to Saw Mello. This is more to cut through the mix, but this is when you get into the mellow chill. Right? So, uh, I wonder if the 40-year-olds, I, I think Sequential Circuits Pro 1 still sounds really, really, really good. Um, I didn't get a chance to reference or play with one. I wish I could especially considering we've now lost the fearless leader of Sequential, um, who is a friend of mine, but I'm sorry to see that happen. But in some ways, this keeps the legacy kind of as a plus because I, I love supporting something that is so such a great synth. The, the history behind the Pro 1 is really interesting because they'd made the Prophet 5. He designed the Prophet 5, and synthesizers were still in the $3,000 range, right? And $2,000 range, I, I can't remember what it was back then. But in 78, they released the Pro 1. And one of its claims to fame, beyond being a monophonic synth, was that it was the first synthesizer to be available for under $1,000. So you could get a single voice of a synthesizer and it wouldn't cost $2,500 like everything else was. Yes. So, yeah. It was it was a very unusual NAM show. Um considering that we lost Dave just like days before the show started. He's going to have a booth. There's going to be a party on Saturday. 
um, all sorts of things that was sad that we didn't have happen because we, we lost him. Um, but anyway, <sighs> yeah. So enjoy the library. Thank you for being here and for hanging for a bit. It's nice to, <laughs> yeah. yes, Daniela, please, if you, if you could be positive, I would appreciate it. <laughs> this is supposed to be a positive live stream and coming here and being negative just brings everybody down sometimes. So don't do that. Positive, right? Cool. All right. See you guys next week for another live stream. Creativity to you all. See you later. Okay.